This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is the Sim Experience GS5 G Seat. The GS5 G Seat is a very innovative product and a one-of-a-kind product when it comes to sim racing. Where do I even begin when it comes to telling you what the G Seat really is? I mean, is it a motion simulator? No. Well, yeah, actually, it kind of is. Is it a tactile feedback system? No. Well, yes. Technically, it kind of is. The G in G-Seat refers to G-forces, and that's exactly what the GS5 G-Seat is trying to do while sim racing. Create simulated G-forces. And it comes from Sim Experience, the masters of motion with their selection of full motion sims to choose from, as well as the masters of tactile feedback via their powerful software, Sim Commander, and its ability to give physics-driven life to butt kickers quakes, or any type of tactile shaker available. The Sim Experience GS5 G Seat goes for $2,999 and is now available to the public. The GS5 G Seat is a bolt-on seat that can be accommodated or adapted to just about any sim rig on the market. Now, how do I even begin to describe how the G Seat works? It's got four different paddles, or plates if you prefer, that operate individually to put motion within a seat that physically doesn't move. The motion is within the seat itself. With the four different moving panels, it gives the seat the ability to move in six different degrees of motion, left to right, front to back, and even up and down. And by timing the movement of these plates with the physics of the sim, the G-seat is trying to simulate those G-forces on your body. In the case of G-forces, your body is pressing into the seat. In the case of the G-seat, it's pressing up on your body and in those same spots. Think about when you ride a roller coaster and you're thrown into the right side as the coaster goes through a left corner, massive G-loads multiplying your body weight into the seat. The G-seat is doing that in reverse, pressing up and doubling your body weight, much like a G-force in a real life situation. And you think about your body's relationship with the seat in driving. When people talk about driving by the seat of their pants, they're talking about that interaction between them sitting in that seat and that natural feeling you get in your inner ear as G-forces and different pulls and forces of the car are felt through the seat and processed by the brain and it gives you a handling on the car. Again, that's exactly what the GS5 G-seat is attempting to do. Just think about when you're in the car and you stop on the gas pedal, where do you feel it in your body, that new pressure of G-load from acceleration? Well, you feel it in the back, in your back, as you're pressed down into that seat by the added G-load. The G-seat will give you pressure in that exact same spot at that exact same moment. Under braking, all that momentum and speed that we built up when we hit the brakes, that momentum is pushing us forward into the seat and you're feeling it under your thighs. And again, that's exactly what the GS5 G seat does. It presses up under your thighs, under braking, to give you that same sensation of being pressed down into your seat. And when we're cruising down the track, we talked about this in the roller coaster scenario, but you're cruising down the track and you throw the wheel to the right, all of the weight of the car, all of the energy is being thrown to the left and that includes you, but you're strapped to your seat and that means you're pressed in that left side and the G-seat does that by bringing both left panels up and meeting you with resistance, simulating the G-forces of a right-hand turn or a left-hand turn or as we already discussed under braking or acceleration and even better, all of those combined together. And then finally, we have those moments of going up and down, whether it be cresting a hill or whether it be rumble strips or big bumps that might cause very fast suspension hits. The seat reacts in those ways by lifting you up and dropping you down just the same sort of way, giving you those same sort of sensations that you're getting in a real car. It's just turned around. It's the seat pressing on you instead of you pressing on the seat. So let's go ahead and quite literally pull the cover off of the Sim Experience GS5 G seat, see what it's made of and how it actually works. And it all starts with the Kirky racing seat. And anybody who knows Kirky, they're iconic in the world of racing. They're known for their snap-on covers, which come off rather easily, and their metal construction. In the case of this one, it is black on black metal with a black cloth covering. The seat itself is a wide seat that will accommodate most driver sizes 
and is fixed in angle in that it doesn't recline. And then built into this rigid metal seat are four cutouts with the Sim Experience GS5 motors. Each motor fits nicely into a box that fits perfectly into the seat like it came right from the Kirky factory. The boxes that encompass these motors are in gray metal and extend off the seat about three inches. The boxes from the backside are where they stick out are about nine inches long and four and a half inches wide. They have a carbon fiber trim piece along with a protective shield that has the GS5 logo cut into it, finishing off that super professional look. And then coming off the back side of each box or motor, there's a super thick cable that goes down to the control box. This cable is about seven feet in length. There are two boxes, one per side on the back and another pair on the bottom of the seat. The inside view of the GS5 is far more exciting. With the cover off, we see the panels first. They are elevated above the metal portions of the seat's face and are what your body will mostly be resting upon. The lower panels are large and wide, measuring in at about 13 and a half inches long and a hair over six inches wide. The back panels are a little more elongated and are 17 and three quarters inches long and almost six inches wide. You can see they fill up a good majority of where the driver would actually be in contact with the seat. With the panels removed, you can see how the GS5 G seat actually works. Inside, there's a beefy little electric motor. This motor is mounted inside that box and frame, and on its shaft end is a cam mechanism. When the motor turns, it lifts the cam onto the swing portion of the frame and lifts the outside edge of the panel. The inside edge is where it pivots from, and that means much more movement on the outside edge than the inside ones. It's hard to measure while moving, but the outside edges are capable of a little bit more than two inches of travel, while the inside edge really holds still or a little less than an eighth of an inch of movement. The covering to the seat is a heavy duty woven fabric that is built for years of abuse in real race cars and should hold up fairly well for sim racing. On the inside of the covering and permanently attached to it is the padding for the seat. It's pretty minimalistic in a true Kirky fashion. The covering is form fitting on the top side of the seat and then buttons down along the side and bottom to hold it in place. On the bottom is also the mount that comes pre-installed and can bolt down to just about anything with four bolts or screws depending on your type of rig. The mount is adjustable depending on where you mount the sides to the base and we will cover that more when it comes down to installing the seat. And now the Sim Experience GS5 G seat is ready to be installed onto your rig, but you are going to have to figure that out on your own. How does it work? Well, the mount on this is pretty simple. You've got four holes and all you need is four bolts or screws to hold it down. And I say down because the mounting direction is downward, meaning you're going to have to screw or drill downward into your rig to get the bolts or screws into your chassis. That's gonna work great on most wood rigs, most DIY rigs, most 80-20 rigs. But if you have a conventional or a purchase, you know, over the counter rig, let's call them, they usually use a side mount. So you're gonna have to make some kind of adapter there. But again, it is a simple mount, just four holes. And in my case, I'm mounting it to an RC S1 chassis. The holes on the GS5 mount end up being about 13 and a half inches wide with a few to choose from, but about 11 inches front to back on each side. My R seat sliding rails for its seat come in a bit wider than that. So in my case, I used some flat brackets to make up that distance and then used a couple of sticks of profile tubing as my adapter. It ended up raising the seat about an extra inch, but allowed me to mount it in that perfect spot. And I was even still able to use my seat sliders for final adjustment. The other thing you need to consider when mounting the seat is actually the controller box, which is almost identical to the controller box that I got for my AccuForce wheel. And if you want a clean room or a tidy rig, you're gonna have to figure out where to put it and all the cables. The box itself is about 10 inches long, six inches wide and three inches deep. The cables are about seven feet long with the furthest motors being at the top of the back of the seat. I found a nice spot under the front of my chassis and that allowed me to plug in the cables and then still hide away the box fairly nicely. Each motor has two plugs, one clip-on computer type, 
and one non-locking 10 pin. Eight connections later, the motors are plugged into the box. There's also a plug-in spot for a USB cable to go to the computer, and then finally, a power cord. At this point, our hardware installation is all finished. We could be running it, but we do have some software work to do as well. So if you bought one of the seats, you would have received an email from Sim Experience. Along with that, your license key for the seat and a copy of Sim Commander software that you can download. You download that, click that file, and then install the software and go through the easy steps to get everything installed correctly. In the end, it will find the seat, confirm its operation, search your system for your installed and supported titles, and it will create launch buttons and settings for each title, and then you are ready to drive. When I first sat down in the seat, I have to admit I was caught off guard by how hard and rigid the seat actually is. And anybody out there who's ever sat in a Kirky seat knows exactly what I'm talking about because they're built to protect a driver and last forever, and they do a great job of doing that. The covering, the padding within the covering is very light. And the seat feels flatter and less cushioned than most Sim seats. But those thoughts didn't last long as I fired up Sim Commander for the first time. Because as soon as I did, the GS5 G seat started to initialize. And I immediately was struck by the movement underneath me as the seat went through some sort of calibration. And now things are starting to get exciting. I can feel all the panels going through some kind of range of motion. And to my unexpecting body, I wasn't sure if it was some kind of motion chair or body manipulation. This thing is highly active. And if you had any thought in your mind, whether you even feel the actions of the chair under you, those thoughts are gone in a heartbeat as it starts to go through this ish initialization and calibration process. So now it is time to fire up our favorite sim. We fire up Sim Commander. We've got those pre-installed buttons ready to go for all of our favorite sims. And you click the sim and get down to business. And at the moment you get in the car, the seat will make a bit of noise and the slightest hint of a movement telling you that it's sitting there at the ready. But it isn't until that moment of acceleration that you actually feel any movement at all. The GS5 is built for mostly G-forces, and they don't begin until we are moving our car. But as we roll down pit lane, you can feel the back plates pressing on you ever so slightly. The faster the acceleration, the harder they press on your back, giving the effect of you being pushed down into your seat. At first, this was odd to me, and despite knowing and expecting it to happen, I was still caught off guard by the action. But as the speed started to increase and the G-loads minimized by slower acceleration, the plates backed off ever so slightly to the point that they were again at the ready to deliver any message to my body from the physics of the car. As I headed into the turn, at the moment the car's weight starts to fight those G-forces, the opposite side panels of the G-seat, both top and bottom, would kick up and press on that side of my body. It's giving the effect of my body weight being thrown into that same opposite direction of the turn. And as you roll out of the corner, the G-load is removed ever so slightly from the car and is also removed from you in the seat. Those panels release in timing with the sim back to that resting, ready to go position. Turn the other direction and the same thing happens. It's just a matter of which direction, how fast, and how many G's you are pulling in the car, in the seat, against your body. When using the brakes, you'll be activating the front lower panels. They'll push up under braking when the G-forces of the car are pushing everything forward, and it's the front bottom of the seat that handles the added body weight pressing you into the seat in the case of real-life G-forces, or the seat pressing up on your body in the case of the GS5 G-seat. The seat also responds to the bumps of the track, the curbing effects in the corners, and any fast-moving suspension hits that occur, causing fast but small movement, heavy Gs that disappear as fast as they come. Using all four paddles together, you can get some quick rise and fall feelings from the seat. These actions are all very cool and very much in the right direction of giving me G-force feelings. However, there is still something fairly odd about a seat changing its shape underneath you. Certainly unconventional, and for some people, it might even be off-putting. For me, in the beginning of sim racing, what was missing? 
G-forces. It's something we've always been saying. They'll never be able to give us G-forces in sim racing. And now you have something that is simulating those same G-forces. Now, when I drove it, as I described in my above paragraphs there, all of the panels, all of the forces are really very plain, very distinct. And when you drive slowly or you drive very deliberately, you can easily detect all of these movements and the G-force sensation is somewhat being felt on the seat side of things, but without the added weight effect of actual Gs. However, as easy to detect as the single direction forces can be felt, they also happen in combination. Under braking, it is usually for a corner, and straight line braking turns into right or left steering and the opposite direction of G-forces. At these moments, things are happening much faster and to many panels simultaneously, and it can be a little more difficult to distinguish those feelings. It takes time, it takes laps, it takes mental calibration to really be able to feel all of those forces. And when you get into a faster car and you're pulling more G's and things start to happen at a faster rate, it gets a little more confusing on your brain and takes a little more acclimation, a little more calibration, a little bit more time for your brain to be able to single out all of those effects, process them, and be able to put them to use. So after many hours of driving, after a lot of testing, I was starting to work with the seat a little more than just resisting the seat, which definitely happened at first. And I thought of a few changes that I'd like to make to get things just perfectly dialed in. Now the back of the seat was fine, but the bottom was way too hard. And it was probably built for someone a little bit wider than me. And I found that when the panels went up, I got a feeling of going between them. So I went down to the local fabric store and I actually bought a cushion intended to be a seat cushion. And I placed that on the bottom over the two panels. This made the seat more comfortable and completely solved the dropping between the panel feeling that I was getting. I also found that I had the seat angled forward a bit and it actually had me not sitting back in the seat all the way, which is somewhat critical to getting the effect. You want these panels to be pressing up on you, not reaching out and touching you. So I adjusted the seat, reclined it a little bit more on my rig, and this had me laying back in the seat, applying my back pressure. I even read in the forum, some GS5 owners we're actually using seat belts to even multiply the effect very more, giving you an idea that you really do want to be resting your back on the seat while it's in operation. With the seat adjustments made, my comfort was better. Still not as comfortable as some other seats on the market, but the cushion was making the overall comfort better. The added height helped me line up better with the back plates and the reclined angle kept my back in the seat. These changes made it more comfortable and more effective. On track, these changes really helped the overall effects of the chair for me as well. All four paddles were now contacting me correctly, and this allowed my brain to feel what was really going on. And with the padding on the bottom, my brain was no longer being pulled out of the moment of immersion by that feeling of being between the plates but it still took more time for my brain to keep up with the speed and the sensations of the G-seat. Some of the more obvious moments were starting to sink in or hit home, but the faster moving transitions were still somewhat lost in my brain with the crazy amount of movement going on under my body. But it was when I went to the ovals that I got my first real aha moment with the G-seat. The G-seat's ability to give sustained Gs is something that I've never felt in sim racing before. When you're going around a long banked oval, even a motion sim can't translate that very well. But the G-seat is built for sustained Gs, for applying that pressure, adding it up, ramping it up, holding it on, and then rolling it off as you come off the corner. Without the confusion of braking or acceleration and a bunch of other driving forces, my brain was hit with those G-forces just like I was being squeezed into the side of the seat. It worked beautifully, not only at ovals, but long sustained corners. Think of like the final corner at Sebring. Same thing, you're in the corner so long, the ability to hold that load on my side going through that long right-hander was something, again, I've never felt in sim racing as long as I've been doing it, including every motion sim that I've ever driven on. But it was so obvious when the car had transitioned into G-loading through the corner. 
You could feel it come on on corner entry. You could feel it press against you all the way through the corner. And then you could feel it slowly releasing as we straightened out the car. It was the most clear sensation of G-forces that I've ever felt in sim racing, ever. It was blowing my mind and it was actually bringing a smile to my face. So with more time, with more laps, I was able to start acclimating more to the seat, starting to recognize the movement of each of the four panels independently and in unison together. As I started to move up to faster cars, I could process that information better, and I started to get more acclimated, more in tune, and more used to the seat and its behavior. With each lap, the brain is educated into what it is feeling as it becomes another part of the trick that you're playing on your inner ear. I was also starting to notice those other sensations as well, like the braking load or acceleration pull in the seat. These forces not being quite as noticeable, but also very present in the motion of the G seat, but they did take a little bit more time to get used to. And when it comes to the rumble strips and that quick vibration that also extends into a slight rise and fall of the suspension and quick up and down G's on the car, well, the G seat does this better than any device that I've used as well. It's better than a motion sim, and it's even better than a transducer at giving that effect. The other feature of the Sim Experience GS5 G Seat is that it actually comes with Sim Commander, and that is a pretty big bonus in that it also includes Sim Vibe. So you can install little tiny shakers into the panels independently, or you can install a butt kicker or any other type of shaker device onto the seat, and you're going to be able to drive that by physics with Sim Vibe included in the Sim Commander. But when using it with the GS5 seat, it's also a bonus because now you have that total tunability. You can set up a profile for your favorite car, for your favorite sim, your favorite track. You can break it down as much as you want and you can use it to tune all of the profiles to exactly the sensations. You might even find yourself isolating one independent profile at a time, turning it all the way down, turning it all the way up until you find exactly the amount of it, until you train your brain. That is exactly what that panel or that force feels like and continue to add things, change and tune the profiles to get them exactly how you want them to feel. Sim Commander gives you total control of the G seat and its actions between added time of driving, dialing in your settings and proper acclimation time. The GS5 really shows its ability to be a one of a kind product in sim racing that can do some things that no other product can do. So I've told you all about the Sim Experience GS5 G Seat. I've told you what it costs. I've told you what it takes to install, assemble, get it dialed in. I've even talked about what it's like driving and what I experienced, what I felt when I was driving the seat. But it's so hard for me to really show you that. The camera doesn't pick it up. You can't actually feel what I'm feeling. And therefore, it means that the good, the not so good, and the bottom line might be more important than ever. So let's get down to them, starting off with the good. And that being that it's a totally innovative and one of a kind product. Adds new life to your sim. Much more feeling of the body roll of the car. Much more feeling of braking and acceleration of the car. The best oval G-forces that I have ever felt. Great vibration and feel to the car. Great feeling of bumps and suspension hits. Incredible workmanship. Heavy duty, feels quite bulletproof. Very adjustable software, dial it in for you. Ready for mini shakers to be installed on the panels. Comes with Sim Vibe. Compatible with most racing titles and other types of simulations. Real racing seat, authentic. And now on to the not so good. And the GS5 G seat, well it is expensive. A bit noisy. Not a comfortable seat. Takes time to acclimate and feel everything. Not all effects are perfect. Can be intense at times. Heavy duty cables are tough to route, hard to hide, and could be longer. 
10 pin plug is delicate times four of them. And now on to the bottom line. The Sim Experience GS5 G Seat is one of the most innovative products that I've ever seen in sim racing. And it absolutely addresses one of the first things that I thought sim racing was missing, that being G forces. But it does take some time to get used to. It does have a calibration or acclimation process before you're even going to be able to tame the beast and be able to actually get a sensation of what all of those forces are doing and be able to single them out and have your brain, your inner ear, pick up on them at the frequency, the speed that it's all happening at. And that acclimation, it comes from laps, it comes from time, and it comes from tuning the settings to get the most out of it. Now, is it critical that you be an engineer and tune everything perfectly? No, it's a pretty simple process, and you don't have to do it, but it will take that time or those laps to acclimate or calibrate whatever you want to call it to get used to it. Let me tell you a little story that's sort of a comparison of what I'm talking about. When I first tried motion sims, my initial thoughts, my first opinion, I couldn't stand them. I felt like they just made me slower. I found myself fighting with the motion seat, with my brain not able to process these new sensations and new feelings all at once when trying it for the first time. This had a similar type of a learning curve. I was a little more ready for the seat, so I'd never say anything like I didn't like it. I would just say that it took some acclimation. It took time to be able to signal things out. When I started things off with the Mazda, the MX-5, it slowed everything down. It made it so my brain could really process the difference between straight line braking, trail braking, mid-corner Gs, and rolling out. It was when I went to the ovals, as I talked about, that I was able to really get a difference between left and right and the feeling of those sustained Gs going through long corners that really, really is one of the best features of the seat altogether. Now with that said, I will say there is still something slightly odd about a seat moving, a seat transforming underneath you. And for some people, that means it's not going to be for them, much like motion. Motion is not for everybody. This seat might not be every, for everybody. And some might even call it a distraction. Now the GS5 G seat, it takes over where a motion sim left off. There are things that motion sims for a long time, for many years, have been trying to do and failing to deliver. And the GS5 G seat is the first thing to give you any sensation of any kind of G-forces. And because of that, what I really can't wait to do is to combine this with a motion platform. Because quite honestly, this delivers left to right sensation way better than a motion platform can. So why even ask the motion platform to deliver those forces when this does it better? And on the other hand, in other directions like front to back braking, the motion sim does that so much better than this seat. They both do it a little bit, but the motion sim does it better. So we can lean on the motion sim. I like to call our sim rigs our symphony. And every time you add another instrument, it's another layer to that band. Sure, you can have a band. You can have a band with just a drum and a guitar and a singer. But every time you add another instrument, you get another layer of depth to that band. I'm not calling it better. I'm just saying another layer of depth. Maybe it's a keyboard section. Maybe it's a horn section. Maybe it's a synthesizer. But the thing is, every time you add another layer, you can tone down how hard the other players have to work. All of a sudden, the drummer doesn't have to carry as much beat, as much time. All of a sudden, the guitarist isn't the only one focusing on the sound of that symphony. And every time we add another component, whether it be a button box, a handbrake, VR, triple screens, motion, motion in your seat or a G seat, all of these layers, all these pieces or instruments of the band are another layer making our symphony that much better. Now, keeping all of that in mind, I got to remind you, one of my favorite bands is actually a drummer, a guitarist, and a singer. And I love that kind of music. 
And when I think about $3,000, that does make this very expensive. And that's a lot of instruments of the band, $3,000. So obviously this seat is not for everybody. This seat is really intended for somebody who's already got motion, somebody who's been on the fence about getting motion, somebody who perhaps wants motion, but doesn't want the added footprint that a lot of motion sims might add to their rig. And at $3,000, it's actually cheaper than just about any motion platform or system that you can even get. So it's more for those people. It's for those people who are building. I talk about it all the time. Those people who are looking for those over the top, I have every piece that you can get, every piece of immersion that you can get added to my rig. This is certainly perfectly intended for those people. Now, before I bring things to a close, there are a few things that I definitely want to talk about or address. Let's start with the noisy factor that comes from the not so good list. If you watch some of the live streams, people even mentioned how loud this thing actually was. As it turns out, I'm using a semi-amplified mic and a lot of times I was using profiles that were very aggressive. They're making a lot of added additional noise well beyond normal usage. And if I really had to compare the noise volume, it's right on par with like a butt kicker. So if you have a neighbor, somebody in the house, if you have that thing cranked up, they're gonna hear it. It might not annoy them, but they might just hear it. Maybe about the same amount of noise as like a Logitech G27 steering wheel. I used this for a long time, and admittedly, it took me a few weeks of tuning, testing, and getting used to to the point where I was really comfortable and really started to enjoy the seat. So then it really comes down to $3,000. Is it worth it? Well, again, if you're one of those over-the-top sim rig builders, absolutely it's worth it. Is it worth it? Sure, if you're considering motion and looking for other options or an addition to motion, it certainly is worth it. Maybe combined with a less expensive motion sim, it might be the ultimate compared to some very expensive motion sim options that are available out. And then finally, I know people are asking because I've already had people ask this of me directly, how does it compare to a motion platform or a motion simulator? And in some ways, they overlap in so many ways and they actually do similar things. And then they both kind of do something different on their own independently, each doing those things a little bit better than the other. So it's really interesting and I think they really would work best together. Like I said, more parts of the symphony. That's what I'm really looking forward to trying. That's what I'll be doing next with this seat is putting it on a motion platform to see how I can blend that symphony together. The other thing I gotta tell you, it did take three or so weeks in order to get this really dialed in, to get tuned in, to get all my settings just right, to get acclimated to the seat, to the point where I could say I was really starting to enjoy the seat. And then in some cases, I was starting to love the seat. And now it's to the point where if you took this from me, you took it off my rig, I would freak out because I don't even know if I could drive in a static rig at this point. So I hope I've told you everything you want to know. I hope I've answered every question that you'd have about the Sim Experience GS5 G Seat. If not, go to simexperience.com and you can see their motion simulators along with the G Seat Sim Commander and Sim Vibe. If you have any questions, of course, you can always send me an email, sean, S-H-A-U-N, at thesimpit.com and I'll do my best to answer your questions. So that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to thumbs up this show and be sure to tell a friend so we can continue to grow. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.